Okay, tonight, uh, First Nephi chapter 14. And it shall come to pass that the Gentiles shall hearken unto the Lamb of God in that day, that he shall manifest himself unto them in word, and also in power, in very deed, unto the taking away of their stumbling blocks, and harden not their hearts against the Lamb of God. They shall be numbered among the seed of thy father. Yea, they shall be numbered among the house of Israel, and they shall be a blessed people upon the promised land forever. They shall be no more brought down into captivity, and the house of Israel shall no more be confounded. You know, a lot of the promises that we read about are promises made to Israel, right? And so, you know, if you're not of Israel, I suppose you can start to think, well, what about me? You know, doesn't God uh, love me and have a plan for me? And so, really, as you're reading what it says here, it says that the, the Gentiles, who would be, obviously, those who are not Israel, says if they hearken unto the Lord, and, and they do basically what they're supposed to, you, you'll be numbered with Israel, okay? So everything that promised Israel, you get it too, right? Because certainly the, the Lord came for everybody there. So the plan of salvation is for everybody. So. And that great pit which hath been digged for them by that great and abominable church, which was founded by the devil and his children, that he might lead away the souls of men down to hell, yea, that great pit which hath been digged for the destruction of men shall be filled by those who digged it. Unto their utter destruction, saith the Lamb of God. Not the destruction of the soul, save it be the casting of it into that hell which hath no end. For behold, this is according to the captivity of the devil, and also according to the justice of God, upon all those who will work wickedness and abomination before him. Basically for those who don't uh, you know, find themselves part of his family, then there's a, a place for, for those folks to go also. Right? And I, I like how it said, you know, it says that a great pit which is digged by, basically you know, referred to the great model church, or those who would try to uh, confound people and, and lead them astray, like the digging a pit. So that pit's going to be filled with, with what? Themselves. Exactly, with the ones who are digging it, right? Mm -hmm. That's right, okay, so that, that's who's going to be filling it. And now, so towards the end of verse 3, where it says, you know, it's talking about the, the utter destruction, but it says, not the destruction of the soul, right? It save it be the casting of it into hell which hath no end, right? If, you see what that's saying, of course, is that as we understand it, the soul lives forever, whether you're good or not, okay? Your soul lives forever. So it's not a matter of, is your soul going to live on? It is. It, the, the only question is, where is it going to live? <laughs> Where is it going to live? Okay, so that's why when it says the destruction of the soul, not really being destroyed, it's just being sent to a place that you may as well have been destroyed. It would have been better, right? Because it's, it's you go to, to that that place, that's not a place you want to live for eternity. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me, Nephi, saying, Thou hast beheld that if the Gentiles repent, it shall be well with them. And thou also knowest concerning the covenants of the Lord unto the house of Israel. And thou also hast heard that whoso repenteth not must perish. Therefore, woe be unto the Gentiles, if it so be that they harden their hearts against the Lamb of God. For the time cometh, saith the Lamb of God, that I will work a great and a marvelous work among the children of men, a work which shall be everlasting, either on the one hand or on the other, either to the convincing of them unto peace and life eternal, or unto the deliverance of them to the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds, unto their being brought down into captivity and also into destruction, both temporally and spiritually, according to the captivity of the devil of which I have spoken. This uh, phrase of a, a marvelous work among the children of men, right? That's that, that's found in in Isaiah has the same wording, right? It tells about the time there'd be a marvelous work done by by God, and uh, and now he's referring to it here, saying that the time's going to come that there there is going to be a marvelous work done. It's going to be an everlasting work, one way or the other. So it, and like it's saying here, either to peace and life eternal, right, for those who were going to be delivered that way, or to eternal destruction, all right? So the time's gonna come that pretty much every, so everybody goes one way or the other. So it, it's a marvelous work and a marvelous thing that's gonna happen, all right? That people will go to the place where they belong, basically. And you know, and, and in this life, we, you know, we often uh, you know, struggle with different things and we say, you know, like, kind of, you know, what, why do bad things happen to good people and why do those who are doing wrong seem like they're, they're getting away with it or something like that, right? I'll, I'll say the time's gonna come that everybody will be where, where they belong. So, and it's not just for a time, it's, it's for forever. So, I mean, that's, that's the marvelous work that, that's going to happen. And the, towards, as the closer it gets to the end of the world, the, cl the closer to the, seeing that actually come about. Right? And that's, that's really what it's kind of introducing here, is that the time's going to come when the, the, like Jesus comes again, and then you see these t the things that the scriptures uh, foretell come to pass. And it came to pass that when the angel had spoken these words, he said unto me, Rememberest thou the covenants of the Father unto the house of Israel? I said unto him, Yea. And it came to pass that he said unto me, Look, and behold, that great and abominable church, 
which is the mother of abominations, whose founder is the devil. And he said unto me, Behold, there are saved two churches only. The one is the church of the Lamb of God, and the other is the church of the devil. Wherefore, whoso belongeth not to the church of the Lamb of God, belongeth to that great church, which is the mother of abominations, and she is the whore of all the earth. What you see here in verse 10 in particular, um, this is a, really a kind of a profound statement, all right, and as you look ahead to, to like, you know, later in, uh, further down the road, saying that eventually it's, you're either one way or the other, okay? Either you're, you're with Jesus or you're not, okay? And so, you know, like today, you know, we, we refer to a lot of organizations as churches, all right? I mean, you go right down this road and there's a whole bunch of, you know, of things you call churches, all right? So, you know, it might seem confusing today, like there's, you know, all these different churches you could pick from, all right? But it says, as the end times come, really, there's only two choices. Either you're with Jesus or, or you're not, all right? And, and that's how it's going to be as it heads towards the end, all right? You're going to have to make that choice, either with Jesus or, or not with him. And so it's saying that if you're with Jesus, you're with the church of the Lamb of God, all right? Or if you're not, you're with the church of the devil, all right? It's not, it's not the idea like you hear today that there's just multiple ways to get to God, and, you know, basically one more like, you know, pick, pick your own path, pick your own way to get to God. I mean, that's the kind of stuff I hear is that it doesn't, doesn't matter how you get to God, pick, pick your own way. All right, well, that's, that's not really what we believe. We believe that Jesus is, is the only way, so that uh, we, you know, the time will come when people understand that. Either you're with Jesus or, or you're not. That, you know, as the church of Jesus Christ, that we would basically be taking the lead in being that church in the Lamb of God, right? So that uh, but we fully expect that other churches will, you know, will join together. We're happy that our church is named the Church of Jesus Christ and that we're, we're standing for Christ. And so that's, you know, we want to see our, our church be, you know, firmly on that. The, the church of the Lamb of God. You know, we, we know what we have in the Church of Jesus Christ, and we, we teach others, you know, what, what we have. And then, uh, you know, and again, it's not to say that people other churches obviously can be saved as well, but, you know, we, we're not going to, we're not judging, this is a good, that's a good church, that's not a good church, but that's, that's not our, not our, our job. That's not our job, right? No, that's we, the Lord's job. We know what we job. have, and we present that to, to the world. Yeah. And, you know, and, and then as far as individuals and other churches, God ju judges them, all right? But, it, it, but he, he'll know who, the, the Church of Jesus Christ is when that time comes. Who's on the, the Church of the Lamb of God versus the Church of the Devil? To understand, there's only there's only two. So you're either in or you're out of it at that point. And it came to pass that I looked and beheld the whore of all the earth, and she sat upon many waters, and she had dominion over all the earth, among all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people. And it came to pass that I beheld the Church of the Lamb of God, and its numbers were few, because of the wickedness and abominations of the whore who sat upon many waters. Nevertheless, I beheld that the church of the Lamb, who were the saints of God, were also upon all the face of the earth, and their dominions upon the face of the earth were small, because of the wickedness of the great whore whom I saw. This, I mean, it's probably not surprising to you what it's saying here, right? It's saying that the, the church of the Lamb of God, it says the numbers were, were few, right? And, and the other one, the numbers were, were big. Yeah. It, it shouldn't be any surprise, because you, you see you know, how, what we face in the world today. I mean, again, it's... We're, we're so grateful and thankful for those who do, you know, come to Christ, but they're not exactly breaking our door down to get in here, right? And uh, there's pl plenty of other activities that are going on tonight that have a lot more people as part of them than what, than what we would have here. So, you know, you know, it's not surprising. Yet, what, what is nice to see is that it, it's, it's towards the end of, uh, of 12 there, it says, Still the saints of God were upon all the face of the earth. And the, so they're, they're all over the place, all right? It's, it's not that it's huge numbers, but yet the influence is felt all, all over, right? And, and, and just using, you know, what we do in our church as an example, you know, I mean, we're, we're in 21 countries, right? But yet our church is still small, okay? But yet we have, you know, a few here and a few there and a few there. So we're making our way around the, the world, sharing what we have as the gospel of Jesus Christ so that others might be able to benefit from that. And those who accept it, fine, but you know, we're leaving the word wherever we go, so... You know, I mean, it does bear out here, right, that although our numbers are going to be few, yet we're going to have influence really in a lot of different parts of the world. And it came to pass that I beheld that the great mother of abominations did gather together multitudes upon the face of all the earth, among all the nations of the Gentiles, to fight against the Lamb of God. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the power of the Lamb of God, that it descended upon the saints of the church of the Lamb, and upon the covenant people of the Lord, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth, and they were armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. In 13 and 14, you're starting to see the description of a, of a, a battle. Now, do, do, do you know what battle this might be? Armageddon. Yes. Okay, that's exactly what, what this is, right? This is the battle of Armageddon, right? And it, it lines up 
with uh, the Revelation chapter 19 uh, fairly well, actually. In verse, verse 19 in chapter 19, what's described is almost exactly what was in verse 13 that we just read here. Okay, so go ahead and read, read verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Okay, and, and if, if you know how the prophecy goes there, the one who sits on, on the horse is Jesus. Right? So that uh, saying they were, they were trying to make war against, against Christ and his army there in the Battle of Armageddon. And now here you see in verse 13 of what we just read, it says they all came to fight against the Lamb of God. Right? So it's really it's the, same, the same description, just, just the wording is different. Right? And now if, if, you want to, if you want to read verse 8 in chapter 19. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Okay, that's the one that lines up with, with verse 14 here, all right? Because, first of all, it says to her is, is the, the church at that time. You know, it says it was granted that, that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, and the, and the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, all right? So in 14, you see here it says, uh, towards the end, they were armed with righteousness with the power of God and great glory. So the righteousness of the saints is what allows, you know, the Christ and the army of Christ to be uh, successful there, to be victorious, that's all Okay, so, so the, like I said, there's a, a lot of parallels here in what we're reading, 13, 14, 15, and 16, their description of the Battle of Armageddon, and there's comparable verses in chapter 19 of Revelation. And it came to pass that I beheld that the wrath of God was poured out upon the great and abominable church, insomuch that there were wars and rumors of wars among all the nations and kindreds of the earth. And as there began to be wars and rumors of wars among all the nations which belonged to the mother of abominations, the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the wrath of God is upon the mother of harlots, and behold, thou seest all these things. And when the day cometh that the wrath of God is poured out upon the mother of harlots, which is the great and abominable church of all the earth, whose foundation is the devil, then at that day the work of the Father shall commence in preparing the way for the fulfilling of his covenants, which he hath made to his people who are of the house of Israel. That's back in Revelation, there's a part that says, The beast and the false prophet were cast alive into a lake of fire, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. All right, and that, that would line up with verse 15. Then with 16, it just, it just says that in verse 2, that God has judged the great whore. Okay, and, and so these are things in Revelation that you, know, you can see that it's, the wrath of God is poured out upon the, the great whore, the great abominable church, and so forth, because that's that's how they're going to be defeated, right? That, first of all, the righteousness of the saints makes... Uh, the people victorious, but those who are on the right side, right? God protects them, and that His wrath is poured out upon everybody else. And so we will see that. I mean, you know, me personally, but that, that will be seen in history, right? That, uh, that that Christ comes again, and He is victorious. He with His army, right? And that, that's a different Savior than than came to Bethlehem, right? The, because he, he he then came as uh, you know quietly and humbly and meekly. And when Christ comes again, He comes as leading the army, right? So at that, at that point, it would be a totally different way and totally different uh, type of, of outcome. Just one more thing on the, you know, choosing one side or the other. You know, again, if you remember in Revelation, it does come you know, to the point where you do have to, to choose, right? Where either you take the, the, the 666 or you, or you don't, right? And, and so, you know, it's again, do you, you're on one side or the other. So there's no saying you're going to, you know, be on the fence or hang in the middle, right? You'd have to choose one way or the other. And that's, again, how you're choosing in the church of the Lamb of God or the church of the devil. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me, saying, Look. And I looked and beheld a man, and he was dressed in a white robe. And the angel said unto me, Behold one of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Behold, he shall see and write the remainder of these things, yea, and also many things which have been. And he shall also write concerning the end of the world. Nephi is seeing all this, and, you know, he's seeing the battle of Armageddon. And things are going to be happening. He says, now kind of he looks and he sees a man in a white robe and says, here's one of the twelve apostles. And, and he's going to be writing stuff about the end of the world. Now, do you know who that would be? John. Yeah, that would be John, right? Because of course he wrote the, the book of Revelation. So it's so yeah, he kind of saw him and that said that he was going to be doing writing as well. Wherefore the things which he shall write are just and true, and behold, they are written in the book which thou beheld proceeding out of the mouth of the Jew. And at the time they proceeded out of the mouth of the Jew, or at the time the book proceeded out of the mouth of the Jew, the things which were written were plain and pure, and most precious and easy to the understanding of all men. And behold, the things which this apostle of the Lamb shall write are many things which thou hast seen, 
and behold, the remainder shalt thou see. Again, referring to John, that his writings would appear in the, the book that's going to come out of the mouth of the Jew, which of course we said last week was the Bible, right? that it would be part of that writing, which we know was, was the case. And, and then in, in 24, as you're seeing, he says he, he's going to write all the stuff that you've seen, and, and even more than that, and, and now I'm, I'm going to show you the rest. Right? Levi's about to see even other things that, that John would be writing about and that, that John would have seen. But the things which thou shalt see hereafter thou shalt not write. For the Lord God hath ordained the apostle of the Lamb of God that he should write them. And also others who have been to them hath he shown all things, and they have written them, and they are sealed up to come forth in their purity according to the truth which is in the Lamb in the own due time of the Lord unto the house of Israel. And I, Nephi, heard and bear record that the name of the apostle of the Lamb was John, according to the word of the angel. He's telling us going to be things that he's going to be shown that... He doesn't want him to write them, all right? He says, you know, you okay, well, write down this much, but there's going to be other things. Don't don't write them. Partly one because John's going to be writing them, all right? So, so why do it? You know, rewrite them, the whole thing. But secondly, there's things that says that they're going to be sealed up and they'll be known later on, right? And, and we would assume probably even uh, John, in his own revelation, probably saw things more, you know, over and above maybe what he wrote, right? Because there were things that God reveals to certain people, and then he says, well, just. You know, just we're going to sit on that for now. We'll reveal it when the, when the time is right to, to people. All right? So that, that's kind of what he's saying here. That in 26, they're, they're sealed up to come forth in their purity. Right? That when the time is right, then, then they're going to come, come forth. Right? You know, we, do, we do believe that. There's information that comes out over, over periods of time. So, so I mean, yeah, but yet you can imagine the, the blessing here of, of Nephi seeing all this, you know, these future events. And, uh, you know, even now to be, I'll say, trusted to see this and say, okay, I'm going to show you this, but th this is just for you now. All right, this part's just for you, so you're, you're going you're to witness this, but we're not going to reveal that just, just now. And behold, I, Nephi, am forbidden that I should write the remainder of the things which I saw and heard. Wherefore, the things which I have written sufficeth me, and I have written but a small part of the things which I saw. And I bear record that I saw the things which my father saw, and the angel of the Lord did make them known unto me. And now I make an end of speaking concerning the things which I saw while I was carried away in the spirit. And if all the things which I saw are not written, the things which I have written are true. And thus it is. Amen. If you remember, it started out, Nephi asking to see the things his father saw. That's why he's saying out here at the end, well, I, I asked for that and, and I got that. Right? I saw the things my father saw and a whole lot more. Right? A whole lot more. Or at least from what we can tell. I mean, I don't know how much was shown to Lehi, but at least he saw, he definitely saw the things his father saw. And that he was able to experience that, got the meaning of a lot of that, and then went on to see all the way down to the end of the world. So it was, it was a wonderful, powerful vision that Nephi had, and so he shared a lot of it here in these four chapters. Yet, as you see, it says it's only a small part of the things which I saw are written. There's a whole lot more that I saw that I'm not even writing down.